really long videos. Can you react to this video of VG saying that bivalves deserve the precautionary principle? Uh, yeah, I like I I have a I have an idea of how I I, I mean I already have an idea of how I'm gonna respond to such a thing. Bad. Uh, Old gobble or bivalve gobbler ninety two dollars. If you hold the precautionary principle when talking about bivalve sentience, would you also have the same view? If I were to extract ganglia from myself slash someone else and cook it up. Uh, okay. What a lot of people kind of misunderstand about um, what causes sentience is just because there are the same structures um, in different organisms that function for different purposes, that doesn't mean those structures function the same. I well, if they're the same structures, and how could they be the same structures but serve different purposes? I mean, like, maybe? Um, you know, like a stick is, you know, a stick you can use to, like, prop something up or you can use it to whack somebody over the head with so I guess the same structure could have two different purposes I mean he would have to just demonstrate like I, it, I don't even see how this matters whether or not they serve two different functions the question is whether or not they're sentient um, it, so it sounds like if he was to make an argument for their non-sentient space on this that he would be somewhat begging the question I, I think I worded that right so basically um what can happen is that the nerve ganglia within your own body function differently uh, than the nerve ganglia um, in a bivalve, or in the bivalve it could... Well, it, the argument isn't that they're functioning the same. It's that we don't have any reason to believe that either are sentient. Um, ...be like a very, you know, simple form of sentience. But in your body, uh, the nerve ganglia themselves are not sentient. What's the argument for that? I mean, why wouldn't they be sentient? Maybe it would serve some evolutionary advantage for them to be sentient. I don't I don't see the argument for that. Um, there's research on children that are born without certain parts of their brain, where normally, if somebody had some sort of traumatic brain injury, that would make it so they're no longer sentient. But if you're born without those structures, then uh, you can still have sentience. So... Yeah, I would need I would I would need to see that. So being born without a brain, you can still be sentient without a brain. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I buy that. Basically, if certain structures are developed and then taken away, that can remove sentience because... Okay, I mean, like, this is kind of actually just conceding the previous point. There are neurological structures in the human body that are not a brain that can give rise to sentience. This seems like you're actually just granting... It seems like you're actually just conceding the previous point, that... If somebody gives you their their cerebral ganglia and says like, "Hey, do you think these deserve the precautionary principle?" Now it's saying like, "You think the answer is yes?" Is you know, it's it was. How do I word this? You know, I mean, you might have be you might be having trouble wording it because it's it's, it's a hard position to defend. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like you have my sympathy on this. It's a very difficult position to defend. Basically, if uh, an organism develops uh like their brain and nervous system um like say going from a fetus into a baby or uh like yeah into a baby um their brain changes and the new structures that are formed are required for sentience their brain changes well wait a second the condition that you're talking about is person is a person born without a brain what does it mean for their brain to change if they have no brain i'm very confused by like the line of reasoning that he's using that doesn't mean they didn't have sentience prior to those newer structures being formed. Oh, he's talking about like a normal person, like forming new structures. Well, well, wait a second. Like, so the structures prior to a brain forming could still be sentient. Yeah, I would grant that. I just don't think we have good evidence to believe that they are. Kind of similar in the bivalve context. So bivalves obviously don't have a brain. They don't have a nervous system. They just have nerve ganglia. That might be enough for them to have sentience. But why wouldn't it be enough for a human spinal cord to have sentience, or the cerebral ganglia inside my brain to have sentience of their own? Whereas for a fully formed human being, um, obviously the nerve ganglia themselves, uh, that's not enough for sentience because... Why not? What's the argument for that? You just keep reasserting the proposition without actually defending it. We have other structures that were developed that were then relied on for sentience. Um, Chances are bivalves aren't sentient, but I would just go by the precautionary principle. But thanks for the name. Well, yeah, like, okay, so now he, it sounds like he's conceding the point, but he just has a different, he just has different values. Like, he would apply the precautionary principle. I personally wouldn't. 
because I think it entails hilarity, right? Because you you get into weird things where you kind of have to bite the bullet on things like it being unethical to eat certain like cerebral ganglia or, or nerve ganglia in the human body or there are even certain types of uh, neurological tumors that are way more complex than anything that you'd find in a bivalve and those tumors sometimes actually even grow brain tissue spontaneously so i mean like they're way more complicated than anything you'd find in a bivalve and let's say the tumor was benign would you still would you be against removing it like and and let's say let's say oh oh I, I'm not I'm I'm not again I'm not against removing it, but w if it was to be removed, would you be against, um, or would you be in favor of putting it on life support and keeping it alive, like keeping this tumor alive? The reason that I don't give a lot of credence to the whole bivalves or sentient thing is because I don't think tumor lives matter. Right? Like, I'm not going to wear a shirt that says Tumor Lives Matter. It's just not going to happen. Um, not unless I have a really good fucking reason to, and I just haven't encountered such a good fucking reason. Uh, examine truth. Uh, yes, I I favor the consumption of bivalves. I don't think it's a rights violation. I don't think it's unethical. 